Join us for a review of the BMW X5M competition. And we will also tell you more about the BMW X6M and talk about the competition package, what's in it and what's not. Let's go! In the front we can see here with the BMW X5M or the M competition. Competition adds some more features and some more horsepower, zoom more to that. Here the front grille, black, really wide, extremely large really with this vertical fin. Then the lower intakes are also bigger. 4 meters 93, 16 for 2 or 195 inches is the length of the X5. 18 inch wheels would be standard for an X5. The M model comes with 21 inch wheels, massive and wow, what a great styling here. Looks really, really fancy. Blue brake calipers as a contrast. Then we also have more M contrast here. The black one that is closed, by the way. The side mirrors in a sporty aerodynamic way. This is also pretty cool. Tinted windows. The design line, main design raises up here. So the X5 overall, a very beautiful SUV, but rather classic styling. And I think here it also gives a good compromise between sporting and elegance on the visual part. And 22 inch wheels is an option for the rear. Then with 315 mil tires. Wow, <laughs> that's almost truck alike. Brings even more traction to the ground. I really love to put these cars in front of so beautiful landscapes. Yeah. That's cool to watch, isn't it? <laughs> I hope so. Then in the rear, we can see the modern tail lamps right there. It's also a big difference to the previous generation. This looks way more modern, also in the three dimensional design. And that the X5 is, let's say, rather simple in the rear layout, but of course, guarantees you more space on the inside if you compare it to the X6. Then the lower black contrast here, big diffuser, a huge X5M competition badge, and of course, the exhaust here, this is the main part, one, two, three, four, and the sound, you already heard a little bit of that. What's your take on the design? <laughs> and 4 liter V8, 600 horsepower or with the M competition, 625 horsepower. Acceleration figure is then 3.9 or 3.8 seconds to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Yeah, that's of course pretty impressive. All-wheel drive as standard with a strong wheelway bias and of course here you can deactivate more of the assistance systems and also the stability control all with these M modes 
to give even more purest punch. So now to the BMW X6M here also in the competition. In Germany, for example, the X6 is only available with the competition package. The X5 is also available without. And in US you can pick with both. And the interesting thing is, so you pay, you know, about 110k in US or 130k euros in Germany for an X5M or X6M. And if you want the pa competition package, you pay another 10 to 14 grand for that. And what do you get on the exterior? First of all, you have this shadow line here, so black frames around the double kidney, otherwise it would be a little bit brighter here. The front lower part is just a little bit different. Then you have these side fake out air takes that are also in black. If you want the special mirror caps in carbon fiber, that's even an option, even with the competition package. Yeah, you know, so you pay a lot of extra just for this competition package. And then you get the sports exhaust in the rear that is also covered in all black. Well, the basic dimensions, X5 and X6, they are of course the same. The big difference is this falling roof line that looks definitely sportier. In this new generation, the X6 also with the horizontal tail lamps, it looks a little bit sleeker, more elegant than before. And it's really a design decision. Whereas in the normal versions, the BMW X6 has a little stiffer suspension setup, the BMW X6M and the BMW X5M share the same suspension settings. Notable differences are that the chassis form of the X6 offers a little more torsional stiffness. The A pillar is flatter and the very same seat that is used in the BMW X6 is positioned 10 mm lower inside the vehicle. Will we notice a difference in the handling due to these facts? Let's find out very soon. And then X5M competition entry badge in the lower part with some special floor mats. We have the steering wheel which has the sporty form and the M colors as well. You already see the special M buttons, soon more details about that. And then the seats, they come standard for the X5M with the, or the X6M the same. It's an, you know, with this integrated head restraint style, I would say. You can put them down, then they look totally integrated, but you can also put them up electronically. It's right there, and they move up. That looks quite fancy with an integrated logo. This is also illuminated at night, for example, and again, a quilted structure. Um, you have some microfiber on the insides right here, but that's it. Everything else is animal skin. And that's, of course, not sport. You slide on that, it gets hot in summer. You have a seat cooling available, but it's not needed. And so far, they have the philosophy when people have a lot of money, they do not care about animals. But that's not true, you know. So in future, they should definitely change that. So only option you have here. For a normal X5, you also have the more friendly, animal-friendly sensor tech material, for example. Now let's get inside, and it's of course fairly easy. You have the upright SUV seating position. These sport seats, they have a little more shoulder support, but they're very stiff, and the structures on the seat make it also even stiffer. Um, so the base sport seat you would get with the, for example, M50i, when you go a step down, is more comfortable. Steering wheel, electronic control, like this, up and down, also in and out. That's definitely very good control. Interior overview, characterized here by this deco element in carbon fiber for the M model. The climate unit is still manual, so also good to control it while driving. I like it also with the manual volume knob. Then you have the sporty steering wheel with the M contrast stitching on the inside. Then you have the special 
M buttons, for example, for a extreme setting and a more extreme setting without uh, stability control, but you can also individualize it in the menu if you like. Left side cruise control, assistance systems, right side volume input. Oh, and heated steering wheel is also available for this one. You have two times 12.3 inch for the screens, all comes digital all the way, so more deals to that. The lower part, we have a three-dimensional batch right here for the X5M competition model in this case then also carbon fiber instruments they come to life when you start up the car and then you have a counterclockwise rpm right there and yeah sounds quite nice and then you can see that there's space in the middle then for example for the assistance systems here again when you go to this m mode then how it changes that's how it looks like then so uh, yeah that's more minimalistic and more performance oriented and here we have the head-up display which is standard for the X5M and the X6M. So you can see the speed, the loud speed and also when you have the GPS turned on and set a destination, even some next intersections is really helpful and you can also adjust the height by the way. Here we have the rear view camera and it's pretty cool, this happening line that follows you. Also with a drone view from above here that you have the backup assistance, so when you go front somewhere, see, oh, it doesn't fit, I want to go back this basement garage, back in, then you can let the car do that steering and uh, everything is being done automatically. This is the gesture control. So, uh, yeah, this is really funny. And we can also hear something from this Bowers and Wilkins optional sound system. So it's a very nice sound, crystal clear and very crisp. There's also the Apple CarPlay integration. It's wirelessly done and this time it also worked the very first time. So no problem as for that. The integration is really cool. goes all the way over the screen. And this is the M menu where you can change all the different stuff like engine, chassis, steering and the brakes. And also the X drive, the all wheel drive. When you have DC off, then you have even more rear wheel bias, for example. Um, it is always a, already a rear wheel biased all-wheel drive, of course. And then these, these things are also then changing depending on what you're doing um, with the buttons right there. And you can really fully individualize it. But you have to take your time a little bit for that. Now getting in the rear. And you have another leg room. That's no problem. So, you know, Considering it's such a long car, there's not much legroom, you know, it's okay also for four tall adults, but that's for example where the Mercedes GLE is better as for the legroom. Then again, the seating comfort here in the rear I found better than in the GLE because here the bench is more upright. For all good dimensions here, this is the base setup, then you can also flip the seats here on the left side and it's a very nice mechanism. Other than that, we can also put some luggage inside that you can see like this or then even upright still fits under this cover which is manual and there's open left and right not a real rail because there's always this seven seater option for the x5 as well but i think for the x5 it doesn't make too much sense rather makes sense only for the x7 i think so Now to the X6M interior. So the difference is the A pillar is flatter, so you have a little bit less space there. Other than that, we have a bright interior in this case, but that you can also go for the X5M. I think bright, of course, a little bit more beautiful, brings more light, and also some of the material is a little bit softer somehow than the other seat we've shown to you. The form is, you know, not really different, but the surface somehow. So this was a little bit more comfortable. Not sure what's the reason for that. In the competition package for this 10 to 14k extra, you get these entry badges here, the special competition entry badges. That's a part of it. And then this three-dimensional logo in the middle console, we've shown to you earlier. And also this very beautiful Alcantara headlining. That is also something that's part of the competition package. And yeah, even more animal skin in the interior. That is even more a, pack, a part of this competition package. So the inside bolstering of the ceiling is a little bit slimmer in comparison to the X5 here. So you gain some headroom then again and you might also see my seating position. 
the seat bench is lower and it's also falling backwards a little bit. That again ensures the headroom. And yeah, it's a little bit less comfortable to sit on in the X5. You sit higher, more upright, have also more traveling feeling towards the front and so on. So even especially better for kids. Still, it's reasonably comfortable here. Again, with this very reduced legroom overall, considering it's such a big car. It will fit for tall adults, no problem. But the X5 overall, a little bit more comfortable. Um, but then again, yeah, it really rather depends on styling, design and so on, because you can live with these compromises they've done here with the X6. Well, of course, the trunk is a big difference. Not exactly the height below the cover, that's the same, but just, you know, when you put it up, when you put this cover up, folds like this, then this height, when you want to trans transport really high things, or maybe want to put a mountain bike in with the, you know, with the handlebars and the transverse way or something, then you're a little bit limited. But still, it's a good opening. You see here, they have some luggage inside, so you can also live with this compromise for most luggage purposes. <laughs> We're starting with the Agile Launch Control with the X6M. We're switching vehicles back and forth today a little bit. And thing is, you have to go to a special sport mode here. But then you also have to go, in this case, this is already right there, in this third shifting super sports mode. And then you also have to deactivate the ESC completely with holding the button. That's a little bit different than in the M Performance models, where it works with the ESC Sport. Here in the true M models, it only works then with ESC completely off. So they made the difference right there. And again, um, only do that when you really experience closed circuit uh, and so on and so on. And, um, you know, just always safety first. But sometimes you might need to accelerate very fast. And maybe then it's helping with safety, isn't it? And that was already a little bit exceeded 0 to uh, 65 miles. Well, almost 70, but 65 miles is here the speed limit, so I stick with 65 here. And that went really quick. And earlier I did some um, X5 acceleration. You'll also see it later on in the driving part um, without the launch control. And the thing is, even if you don't use the launch control, you can like rev it up to like 4,000 RPM or something. So you even without the special launch control, you have a very great drive. But here with the launch control, of course, everything is optimized. And there's a little bit better punch even. You also feel that Neo GeForce is, is a little bit more increased. Maybe we have to compare it in the GeForce meter. Of course, I didn't concentrate on that one, but uh, that will be a very interesting one. So that was the first start of our agile driving part today. So, what about some acceleration? Well, that was already at 80 miles. Quite impressive, man, right? <laughs> and you might wonder why are we allowed to do that? Actually, we have this one lane, you know, kind of surveyed by the police, so we have the, you know, official confirmation to do that, otherwise we would not be allowed to do that here. So they thought, you know, the police, the Germans are in town, let's make that road all free. So otherwise it would be 35 miles per hour. Again, I would always obey the speed limit. If not, the police told us that we're allowed to do it here in this case, because they watched the road for us. And so we can also speed it up a little bit more. And this is really, wow. I mean, I'm already in this sport mode especially here and you heard from preview from sound and the steering is really crisp you see very precise commands i can put on there of course i don't exceed too much of the speed because i also have to check out to the other lane wow but i mean suspension wise that's so stiff in this case it you know it does me a favor because i can get an absolute great command of the whole vehicle to watch this Hill. Wow, 
The anti-roll control works perfectly. You see, it's a heavy, it's a big SUV, but you have no roll whatsoever. Look at how little I have to do with the steering and still have so good control and input of that. Hard on the brakes. Yeah, it's also really cool with the altitude changes here, so you can really test that very well, what's going on. And again, I mean, there's really no roll from this car whatsoever, so this stiff M suspension together with the anti-roll control is really fantastic here. Of course, you will lose some comfort in everyday driving life, but, you know, since we have the sporty funny at the moment, that's really impressive. The all-wheel drive, you've also seen that in the acceleration, the all-wheel drive evens out everything very well. So, you know, you, you don't have this, you know, one axle concentrated acceleration is really distributed very well. Although normally there's a rear wheel bias, so most of the stuff is sent to the rear wheels. And then of course there's more to the front, the more you hammer the throttle. And that's also good for a better acceleration actually. So there's the sheriff here in front of us, controlling the road. There's also another car in front of us, so we have to adapt to the speed there. Not sure where, what he's going to do, maybe we'll overtake that one. I don't know exactly. <laughs> but it's actually cool to have like a police escort to be able to drive fast, right? That's something, yeah, I didn't have that yet. So, I mean, why not, you know? So, shout out to all the sheriffs and policemen out there. Thank you so much for your service. And yeah, why don't we drive around together, right? <laughs> so any police that wants to invite us to come over and uh, drive some nice fast and other rounds, we're always here for you. And the cool thing is really, I mean, we can do some slalom like stuff here. I mean, look at that. Again, no rolling whatsoever. Very precise steering commands. And um, shifting through the modes, it's actually also a lot of fun. You know, you can be like this, very calm. You can even deactivate the exhaust node, and then you're actually pretty calm overall. And at the moment here, for example, I mean, you can go to M1 or M2, then have the different sport mode set here, for example, here, just a little stiffer from the suspension, so it's even stiffer than it normally is stiff, and a little bit more throttle input, and the M2 is even more limited chassis stabilization, so I can throw the car in the corners a little bit more. You maybe also saw that when I you know, went a little bit to altitude and so on over the hill. Um, that got me a little bit more loose, so to say, but still perfect control over this car and even more throttle input. Steering is a little bit crisper, for example, also sport. I have a little bit more resistance in the steering then, for example. And overall, that's, you know, it's really a lot of fun. It doesn't feel at all, you know, uh, like, like driving an SUV or something. I can you know, also um, drop us behind. And then what you can also do, I mean, even if you're in a normal mode, you can um, always go to this a shifting difference here at the shifting lever. This is normal then, and when I'm going a little bit further up and even further, you maybe also hear that, and the car automatically goes in gear down and shifts differently. So keeps it rather in low gears, puts it to the higher RPMs, and so on. That's the comparing driving part here with the X6. Just cancel that one here. And let's also go to some funnier gauges. Here again, with the sport displays. So you have so many options to control this car. Once again, it can be really, oh, there's an X7. Really complicated. Also, while, like with this M mode, because this M mode here um, is more about the driving assistance systems. And then again, the shifting mode here, on the shifting lever, shifting pedals, then the M modes which you can individualize and configure. So yeah, you have to get used to that. <laughs> and also then like, you know, to find your best setting. Most of the time, of course, you will just do DSC on and um, you know, cruise in a very normal way. 
However, what about the difference now X6M and the X5M because now we are in the X6M. Well, overall they are basically the same vehicles, yes, but you do feel some more sportiness with the X6. We also feel it in the base version, so you feel a little bit more connected to the car. And now to our conclusion for today with the new BMW X5M and the sibling, the BMW X6M, as the SUV coupe version. Well, aggressive styling, yes, but it still works. Wheel-wise, of course, you can decide how big you want to have that, especially if you have these optional 22-inch on the rear. But I think, you know, it's still not overly aggressive. On the interior, massive upgrade as for the interior build quality if you compare it to the previous generation. However, only animal skin available here for the seating surface and it's of course not a sporty seating surface, so they should definitely do something else right there. But the build quality on the interior is really superb. Nice natural voice input and so on. Legroom is not the most plentiful you have there in this vehicle, but overall the comfort is still good on the rear bench. Yeah, comfort is also reduced when seating there on these very stiff sport seats. And that's the overall scheme of this car. You have less comfort, definitely. Also suspension-wise, it's even stiffer and with this you know, big wheel size too. So you feel a lot what is going on on the road. Maybe you do want that as a true M customer. Then again, most of the time you will not race this car in everyday driving life. You will also use it on motorway, cruising and so on. And I think the comfort reduction is a little bit too much in this case. But maybe that's exactly what you want. And that would also be a difference, for example, to the Audi RS Q8. This one really goes in a rather, you know, compromised, less sporty direction. Whereas the Audi RS Q8 is, you know, also very powerful. They both have like a very excellent power source, definitely. But still, I found that the Audi, for example, is a little bit more comfortable. The GLE in this generation, we've been driving as the 53 so far. That was also a little bit better, but compromised. But the AMG also, you know, relatively stiff. Soon also with the 63 driving review as for that. So stay tuned for that. Overall, I would rather go back to the M50i. That was still a better compromise between sportiness and comfort. And it was already very impressive in the driving. Here, of course, the big difference is you have this overwhelming sound experience and you know it is so crisp to drive although it is a big suv so that was really really impressive so hardly ever do we see such sporty performance from such a big car and that is of course something you know that's still um, you know giving a lot of emotions high fuel um, consumption of course as i said earlier minimum of 12 liters one kilometers or 20 mpg but that's the absolute minimum it will be way exceeded, I can tell you that, or like lower, of course, from the MPG figures. So if you go for a six-cylinder, for example, like or like the 40i, you can score some very decent uh, fuel economy figures also with the X5 or the X6. So I will take it for today. I mean, it's, you know, definitely a very emotional car, you know, very expensive. You think like, you know, almost triple the price in the base X5 or X7, um, X5 or X6, sorry. So we have to really think about if that's worth it to you. To me, it's more like, you know, they are showing off what they can do, also driving performance-wise. That's very impressive. But for most everyday driving customers, a 40i will be a very decent choice. And if you want a little bit sportier, the M50i. Or recently now for the X5, the PHEV model is also quite interesting. Here then, when you really want the very sportiest experience together with the sound and the super stiff ride indeed. So what do you think about this episode for today and about this car? Let's discuss it in the comments and also which one would you actually go for? Which X5 or X6 version? Tell me and see you next time.